and she's also in charge of coordinating all educational programs in this country. We also have Laura Babulal here, who's the coordinator of the Caribbean branch, and she is in Trinidad and Tobago. So we have most of the team present here. And finally, we have Leticia Andino, who is the coordinator of the World Migratory Birthday for Central America, and she's located in El Salvador. So thank you so much, everyone that's listening to us today. We are going to have the first training for the educators that are getting ready to celebrate the World Migratory Birthday. Maybe you're not completely aware of the topic. You have questions about what activities to carry out. So throughout the month of April, we'll, we're going to have every Thursday at the same time, different activities to show educators the small details that are going to make a big difference and that are going to make your activity a successful event. So how about we begin? I would like to start by asking if everyone well, I would like for you to write in the chat where, where country you're visiting us from. So I am streaming or I am joining from Venezuela and I would like everyone to write the place that they're joining us from. Okay, so the answers are starting to pour in the US, Dominican Republic, Ontario, Canada, Nicaragua, Paraguay. Trinidad and Tobago, excellent. I love that all of these countries and all of these different regions are coming together today for the birds. And we're going to learn a lot from each other. Uh, we are offering a Spanish English translation. For, for that, you need to go at the bottom of your screen, you're gonna find uh, an interpretation button is, is similar to a globe. You click on this interpretation button and select the language you, you want. Okay, excellent. Entonces seguimos por acá, tenemos personas. Great, de... so we have people joining from Mexico, Colombia, Quintana Roo in Mexico also and Argentina. So we are very thankful for giving us your time. If you have any question about translation, you can ask them in the chat uh, or you can open your mics. We are here to help. So Danny, go ahead. In the world, we have three great flyways that bring all our countries together. The first one is to the left is the Americas flyway. The second one is in the center and it covers Europe and Africa. And this is the African Eurasian flyway. And then to the right, we have the Australasian flyway, which includes Asia and a part of Oceania. These are hypothetical flyways because birds don't acknowledge political borders. So they fly around the world by tra tracking signals in the environment that we're going to get to know through our training to understand how birds migrate throughout the world and how they bring us together. Next, please. So when is the World Migratory Birthday? We have two official dates for the World Migratory Birthday. These are emblematic dates where most of the events around the world happen. The first one is the second Saturday of May, which is when spring starts to arrive in the northern areas in the northern pole. So we're talking about Europe, North America, and the northern part of Asia. And 
So spring hits these places and the birds start to return the, where they were spending the winter, which is usually associated to tropical latitudes. The second event, most important event, uh, it happens on the second Saturday of October because it's when the birds leave their nesting sites in the northern temperate areas and they start to migrate looking for warmer places down south. So the nesting sites start to get snow, so they run out of resources, and that's why they start to travel uh, searching for better places to survive. We know that all birds don't migrate exactly on those days. That can vary. Maybe May it's uh, too early for latitudes where there's still a lot of snow. And October, maybe it's too early for for those birds that are in Argentina and Chile. So that's why we encourage all educators when the birds are present at their at their site and it doesn't matter the date. And so if we do that, then the event can be celebrated almost throughout the year. The World Migratory Birthday has a different conservation theme every year and it highlights a need or a threat or an interesting feature about birds. In the previous years, we've come across topics or themes uh, like protecting against plastic, one of the most successful campaigns because a lot of people went out to habitats to collect plastics and to clean the different habitats. And now in 2020, we talked about Bird Connect Our World, which is, which was an overview on tracing technologies and how their different routes could bring us together. Last year, we had a very interesting topic, which was seeing flies soar like a bird. This is a theme that a lot of people during the pandemic used it and it was helpful to overcome lockdown and a lot of people that were celebrating the world migratory birthday noticed noticed a very interesting change in the celebration because we were able to sing songs to dance to do different performances and everything around the features that make one bird unique. And in the year 2022, our conversation topic is dim the lights for birds at night. And in Spanish, it sounds a little different. It's uh, dark nights, safe migrations, and this is for rhyming purposes. And we are very happy of sharing today with you the official poster for World Migratory Birthday for the Americas. Because we have a, post, a poster for the Americas, a poster for the Aero African Flyway and, other, and another one for the Australasian. So each of these birds is selected because it represents a real threat. We've done research, deep research, and we know that these birds are being threatened by pollution, by light pollution in its different ways. What we have in the background of the poster, it's a map of the Americas and every yellow dot represents a city that is lit, lighting up at night. So we're going to continue learning how this topic relates to birds. Every year, the conservation theme involves an artist and birds. And this year, we are very happy to have a South American artist. It's our friend Omar Custodio Sabache from Peru. He's a biologist, illustrator, and educator also. He was in charge of illustrating all the migratory birds of the poster this year, and we are super happy with the result. And that's why we are very thankful 
for his talent. And we're going to continue exploring these birds throughout the illustrations in the presentation. So for migratory birds, we need to have a dark sky during migration times because these are the times when they can hide themselves from predators. They can go unnoticed during the night. The temperature also drops. That means that they can fly longer without getting tired because of the heat. Next, please. Also, the night sky, it's a synonym of safe spaces for birds because also a lot of predators are asleep at these times. And for birds, it's the opportunity to go unnoticed. So what do we understand? As what we understand from this is that dark skies are very important for birds that migrate at night. However, a dark night that protects the birds and overall, overall it's an issue because light pollution makes birds uh, more evident for predators or they get lost and every time we have more and more light obstacles in the in this bird's trajectory trajectory in their migration route we estimate that uh, about 10 percent of the earth's surface is illuminated by city lights at night and we can see it in this map this is a map from nasa it's accessible to everyone you can consult the link that is to the right and this map is being updated constantly we see that we have places that are very well lit and other places that remain dark however most of the planet has at least one lighting spot during the night so we are going to explore how artificial light can affect the the birds and also we're going to see which are the actions that we can take to help bird conservation and we have a whole year to teach new ways of helping bird conservation in each of our countries light pollution can be easily seen in this graph. The light pollution can be noticed when we see this exercise, when we visit a city at night and we look up at the night sky, it's not easy to see a lot of stars, but the opposite happens when we go to a beach or to a mountain or to a place that is far from these big cities, we can find a whole sea of stars. Okay, so who can tell me if you know the name of the most famous constellations or stars that you can see from your region? For example, I can say that where I am in Caracas, I can see the... Orion's belt <laughs> or the Via Lactea or the Milky Way, sorry. Please remember to keep your microphone silent so we are able to continue with the presentation. So the Big Deeper, for example, Great, so all of these constellations are the ones that help each of the, those species to travel during the night. And we can see it in the image that a place that is not polluted by light has a whole night sky full of stars. And in the cities, we have an atmosphere, which is a sky glow. That hides the stars from our view. We also have other constellations in the chat. And did you know that we have constellations that were named after the birds? 
And later today, Daniela Sosa is going to tell us a little bit more about it. Each of the species that were selected for the World Migratory Birthday represents the diversity or the taxonomic diversity of shapes, colors, and the threats that they are going under. We have ducks, water birds, passerines. We have raptor, day and night raptors, singing birds and seabirds. And all of them are being threatened somehow by light pollution. Next, please. Some birds, for example, the night crowned heron, black crowned night heron, it's it hunts at night to avoid competition with other birds during the day. However, when hunting at night, they need to have a very good sight to be able to detect fish during the dark. However, when the lights from the cities or the lights from our own lamps starts reflecting in the surface of the water, then a sort of mirror is formed and it prevents this bird from detecting its prey easily. Next, please. Other species, like the burning owl. This is a raptor bird that has day activities, which means that, that it hunts during the night. However, cities have started to light up the places where this bird used to rest, for example, golf fields, prairies, and some grasslands. So the active, the time in which this bird is active is longer. So this is an individual trying to capture insects that are being attracted to the lights of a football stadium. Next, please. Also, when the birds are attracted by the light, these individuals can start flying around the lights and get tired and fall exhausted to the ground. In this activity, they can also start to collide against windows and then they become an easy prey for our pets like cats, cats or dogs. So in this image, we can see how a group of different migratory species have crashed or collided against this window that is illuminated by the city lights. For the seabirds, the situation can be a little different because some seabirds are colonies. That means that they, they keep big groups of individuals in very small places like shorelines or islands. However, our light pollution makes them get lost or they are attracted to the open ocean. And so they follow the light pollution of these boats and they, that makes them get lost in the ocean. That way they don't have a place to arrive. They fall exhausted to the ocean and they become an easy prey to other raptor birds or to sharks. Next, please. Entonces, ahora, mi compañera... So now my colleague Daniela Sosa is going to tell us what easy actions we can take as example to, to teach the audience that attends their educational activities this year. So Daniela, go ahead. Thank you, Miguel. Hello, everyone. Well, my name is Daniela Sosa. I am the coordinator of the World Migratory Birthday in Mexico. Thank you, Miguel, for all this interesting information that you shared with us. As you said, the light pollution, even though it seems, well, 
it's something that we're very used to. So we know that there are a lot of ways in which it affects birds, but it's not only affecting birds, it's also affecting us, it's affecting insects and different organisms. And it's a whole interesting topic that we also hope that you are interested in finding actions to diminish light pollution. And as I was saying, it affects or cycles, it affects from the most minimal things to the biggest ones. So here we're going to go over a couple of actions that we can take from home to help birds, but also to help ourselves, not only the birds. And well, one of them, a very easy action is to close the curtains during the night. Sometimes maybe we're not even aware that the light that is inside our house is glowing to the outside because sometimes we leave our curtains open or we put extra lights that might not be necessary. So here in this image, we see how this inside light is going towards the out or glowing towards the outside and that's how light pollution is created and we can see that the birds are flying around a, a little uneasy and then next to it we have a window with the curtains closed and then the birds can continue their path. Us who love birds know that a lot of birds migrate at night so here we can see a couple of them that are being attracted by this light and like Miguel showed in the other image how a couple of them were standing also by the windowsill. And another action that we can do is turn the lights off in our garden. If we are not using them, we can turn them off. Maybe we have too much lights at night at different places in the, in the house that are, may not be as necessary. And for resident birds, these affects their nesting and reproduction, not only It shows the location of the nest, but also they can't rest the same way and therefore they can't take good care of their eggs. So on the left, we can see the light being affected by the light and just by turning the light off, we can see that they can take a break and they can take care of their eggs. Sorry. Yes, so do you think you could slow down for the translation? Yes, sorry, I forgot. And yes, as I was saying, we can see that it's not only showing, not only is the light showing the where the nest is to the predators, but it's also a stress factor for the birds. So we need to remember to turn off the lights that are not necessary because just by doing that, we can help them a lot and we can provide them with resting places that the birds didn't know that they may have, or they just rest even more if they were already resting there. Another small action is the lights on the street. Sometimes we see, well, if you ever go and walk through the streets of your city at night, you're going to see a lot of lights that look like the one on the left that is glowing more than it should. And Think about this. Do you think these lights are necessary? Identify those lights that you need that might not be necessary or that are polluting this way because we see that these birds that might have been migrating are getting distracted by this light. And having a light that is facing downwards, like the one that we can see on the right, we can see that the birds can continue with their migration. And also, the type of light that we're using here, we can see that the light is very white and the one on the right it's a little dimmer because it's yellow colored. So also the, the type of light that we use or the type of light bulb that we decide to use helps to diminish the light pollution. And that way birds can carry out their migration even better. And something that we've also noticed in different studies is that it also alters the behavior of 
birds that live in urban settlements. I don't know if you can do this exercise once. If you've ever heard a bird singing at night, here in Mexico City, we've sometimes heard some some thrushes that are singing, singing at night. And we think that that is a strange thing to happen. So whenever we see this type of behavior in urban settlements, it might be because they're not being able to rest. If we turn off the lights or if we just make it a warmer light or we just face them downwards, then we can respect the schedules of the birds because that also happens to us. Maybe sometimes we don't even notice that this light pollution affects the way we rest and we sometimes cannot recover as well and our bodies doesn't work our bodies don't work the same either and the same thing happens with birds so if we do this type of actions these exercises in our homes in our cities then we're also help, helping birds and there are easy ways that we're going to continue sharing later today and also in other workshops and it is these are easy things to do instead of having it glowing all around, we can have it glowing just downwards and have a, a dimmer light. And something that we love about this theme is that we can we can see the stars because the stars help birds to migrate. And this has been known for a very long time. So this is another point. We are taking away their guide that they used to have, but also we are missing on the opportunity of looking at this night sky. I don't know if any of you has been able to see the Milky Way because it said that only a very small percentage of the world population has been able to see the Milky Way, which is very sad because this is something beautiful to see. So us as observers, I don't know if you've ever stayed overnight at the field and you've been able to see it, but it's a uh, an amazing phenomenon, something beautiful to watch. And something very beautiful that we also came across when doing research about World Migratory Birthday is that there are a couple of stars that are named after birds or that are related to a sort of bird. Here we have, well, there are, there are nine constellations that have the name of a bird. One of them is Apus. The other one is Aquila, which is like an eagle, and the Columba. Some of them are difficult for me to see, honestly, but well, they are related to birds. Constellations. And also we will have one that is called Corvus, Gruya, Phoenix, which is a mythological bird, but a very beautiful one anyway. And there is an app that is called Starwalk 2. Starwalk 2 that allows you to identify this constellation. So for this theme this year, we invite you to try to find these constellations that have names of birds. There's nine and here we only put up six, but there's nine. So you can go find the other three. And something that we have in Environment of the Americas is that we love cultural differences. We love to share ideas from other places and to enrich our knowledge with that. And so we have this staff of, of Environment of the Americas for the Americas here. We know that they're coming from all over the world. We have working um, Leticia from Central America. Laura Babula in the Caribbean, Miguel Mat in Venezuela, Susan in Puerto Rico, Susan in the US, Chanel from the US as well, Daisy, who's from France, Shu Yu. And so we can see the diversity because it's very beautiful and enriching for everyone. And that's the same thing that we want for birds. We want to create connections. Think of ideas that serve the purpose of helping bird conservation. And so how can we participate in the World Migratory Birthday? First, 
and we invite you to adopt our slogan, which is aimed to protect or to dim our lights so we can have or protect the migration rights or of birds. And here we have the slogan in different languages, dim the lights for birds at night, and also available for the other languages around the world. And as we were saying, it is something very easy to share this year's topic. And something that we also really, really beg you to do is to register the event in the map. It doesn't have to be a big event. It can be something small, like having a talk in a school or just do a conservation action in your, in your house to decrease light pollution. Some people also like to throw big festivals. Some uh, also have events online. So there are many ways in which you can celebrate and share the World Migratory Bird Day. But for us, it is very important for you to register it in the map. We're going to leave the link here. And this way we know where in the world the World Migratory Bird Day is being celebrated and we can continue sharing about this. We love to share what you do and we want to see it we want to be seen it's a lot of people that is doing something to help bird conservation and this way we can start finding or refining some details and start to get statistics so we can say there were these many events in europe or these many events in the americas so it's really helpful and we also have digital material available for you we here we have the website where you can download these coloring pages for kids. We also has the, have these backgrounds that you can also use to create posters for yourselves or to put important information or suggestions also in social media by tagging us and promoting the World Migratory Birthday. And also here we have our website where you can access all of these resources. We have resources from this year, from the year before, that can be helpful for your events. And also, we grant mini grants. And we want to help everyone to do everything as best as possible. So we want to provide all material necessary. You can request it at the website on the slide or you can get in touch with the coordinator of the region, of your region, so they can guide you and help you for the process. And part of these materials are some pins. We have some colored birds that we've seen that coordinators use them differently. We also have some bracelets. We have puzzles. The, the illustrations of the species of every year and the masks which are always a huge success because people are very creative with them. And every year we try to have useful educational material that is related to the topic of the year. And also we have a poster with a guest artist every year. And so we also get this beautiful imaging. Here are a couple of materials from years before. This is for plastics. This is for birds around the world. This is from last year. And this is material that is all available for you. And this year we also have new material available. And as I was saying, if you're interested in getting access to one of these mini grants to receive this material is very important that you get in touch with the coordinator of your region so the communication is more direct or you can request a mini grant through the website. And also please remember to register your event. To us it's really helpful that you register your event in the map. And well, here are the coordinators by region in the US and Canada, we have Catherine Rubiano in South America, Miguel Mata in the Caribbean, Lara Babulal in Central America, Leticia Andino in New Mexico, it's myself, Daniela Sousa. So we're here to help you and we will be very happy to do so. And here are our social networks, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we'll be there for anything that you need. Thank you to all of our sponsors, friends, and partners, I don't know if you have any questions for Miguel or for me, or if 
you need help. Entonces, ahora Thank vamos. you so much, Dani. So now we are ready for the Q&A session. For everyone, I want to clarify some of them that have already been asked in the chat. What we have is the following. You can find educational materials in our website. You can find educational materials in our website worldmigratorybirthday.org and we have also a virtual blackboard and you can find also the links to download the materials. I'm going to put the links in the chat for the materials in English and Spanish so you can download them from there. If you have any question, you can go ahead and ask it. You can open the microphone and you can ask in English or Spanish because we have translation available. Another question that is popping up of here is the images, the images of the birds, the illustrations. They're also available in for download. Just remember to credit the artist that designed this illustration for educational purposes. There's also resources and that I'm going to put for download, these are free to download. These are the digital materials for downloading. Another question here, when are we going to hear if we were accepted to get a mini grant? For the mini grants, we have a process, which is currently most of the events happen in the US and Canada in May. But for Latin America and the Caribbean, we hope that most of the events happen during the month of October. So you have to go and fill out your application in the website and then we'll get in touch with you to get to know which is the best way to get you the materials. There is no specific date we are going to be replying as we receive the applications. In some countries, we have a lot of support and big coordination. So in those places where we, we work with those leaders to be able to send the materials or to print them in your own country. The other trello, sorry. But uh, I'm going to share the, the exactly link ahora. Um, ¿Qué otra cosa tenemos, Dani? So what else do we have, Dani? Well, there were a lot of questions, I think. Regarding registering your event, the, soonest, the sooner you do it, the better because that way we'll be aware that you're having an event, but it depends. I mean, if you're from Latin America, you can start registering around June, August, but the sooner we have in advance, the better, because that way we can select you for a mini grant or we can get you the materials and for the US and Canada, if you can, Register it as soon as possible because your event is closer. That would be really helpful. And what else? Let me see. And Miguel was already sharing the links. Also, the Starwalk application, we really recommend it. We are recording the Zoom and it is going to be uploaded for to the YouTube uh, account of Environment for the Americas. So you can check it there or you can share it with someone that was not able to attend today. Okay, si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, quiere... okay so if anybody has a question and wants to open the microphone, you can go ahead and do so. We're here tiene... to answer any question. Is anybody raising I, their hand? The resources 
that were linked are from last year. Yes, I am, I am, I am looking for the new link and I'm gonna put just in one minute. And also somebody else was asking about the coordinators for Guatemala and for Argentina. For Argentina, you would have to get in touch with Miguel Mata. And for Guatemala, you need to get in touch with Leticia Anguino. This is by region. So we have Leticia Andino for Central America. And for South America, we have Miguel Mata. For the Caribbean, we have Laura Babula. And for Mexico, it's myself, Daniela Sosa, and Catherine for the US and Canada. If you want, I'm going to share the slide with the email addresses again, in case you want to get in touch with your coordinator. You can also register the events at any time throughout, throughout the year, and you can have an event at any time of the year as well, because migratory birds are constantly moving throughout all countries. And it is typical to think that there is only migration in the north whenever the northern birds return for breeding, but other birds in latitudes down south start the migration as well. So this year we are also including migratory birds from the south. So any day is appropriate for your events. Just to, to clarify, I just put the Trello link with the, with the materials for this year in the chat. Please confirm if this is a correct, if these are the correct materials. Is it working for everyone? Okay. okay yes, thank you. Sí. You're welcome, Jen. Um, sí, está funcionando. Excellent. Yes, it's working. Great. So for those that are asking, everything related to South America is with me. Uh, from Colombia, Venezuela, Guayanas, Brazil, Chile. Daniela is in Mexico because Mexico is a big country. Central America, we have Leticia and Laura Babula for the Caribbean. And I'm going to share my screen once more. This is the way in which you can see the Tello or how it appears to you. Can you see it, Daniela? Yes. And you can have you can find different texts that you can use in social media, different stickers. And of course, you can always get in touch with us in case you need any other type of resource. And I also want to share the next trainings, the upcoming trainings that are going to happen every Thursday, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And today we were checking the conservation theme. Then next week, we're going to talk about how to organize a World Migratory Birthday event, how to register the event, and how to use the illustrations to, to make your own poster. And then in the upcoming weeks of April, we have art, how the artist created the birds. And then the last day of April, the last Thursday of April is the characteristics or the features of the birds and if it's present where we live and how that bird is related to our theme. So all of this information is going to be shared through social media and we are going to be here to support you in anything that you need. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Hi. I'm from Nicaragua, Ariel Salinas, and I want to say hi to everyone organizing the World Migratory Birthday. My question is, are we having access to the presentation that you gave today and also to the upcoming ones? I remember that in the previous courses, I think that it was possible to share these slides. Yes, actually, this session is being recorded and we are going to also have it in our YouTube channel so you can always come back to it whenever you need. And also, you can request the presentation directly from us. If you want a model presentation like the one that we use, you can use the same template 
and we Con gusto. are here to help. You just need to send us an email and we'll write you back. Great, thank you. Sí, hola. I think Eliezer is raising his hola, hand. Hola, Miguel, hola. Hello, Miguel, Dani, and están? hello, Dani. How are you? It is a true pleasure to see you. And hello to everyone from Tamaulipas in Mexico. Uh, I want to send hugs to everyone. And of course, we're getting prepared. This April 12th and June 13th, we have our first activity, and so that's why we're concerned with downloading the materials and starting working with them. Do you have a video that can help us explain very quickly this, how to do this? Yes, Eliezer, thank you for your great question. We do have a video in Spanish and in English in our website that talks about light pollution and you can very easily play it it is in youtube you can download it and play it before your presentation it's a video that talks about what light pollution is i'm also going to put the link in the chat and this was done by our friends in chile because and they work a lot with seabirds and light pollution Perfecto, gracias. Entonces, perfect thank you so we'll review the materials thank you so much and lastly, I don't want to take more than one hour of your time. So really, really thank you for being here once again another year and for making the World Migratory Bird Day the greatest event that brings together people from all over the world. Participating in these trainings is going to help us hand out as certificates as educators for the World Migratory Birthday and those educators that have big events or special events in places that are very far away or that need more support. We also have a program that helps edu outstanding educators and we can even provide sometimes binoculars and free materials for your programs, but it is a commitment that we start to have throughout the year, educators starts to start to learn about the subject. They use the World Migratory Birthday. They disseminate information. They share the events. And that way we can select which are the most outstanding educators and we can give you resources. We have limited resources and that's why we can't help everyone, but we appreciate every effort that you make. So thank you for your time. And if you have another question, this is the time to do so before we leave. And if not, we'll see you next Thursday. Yes, one last question. Yes. Can we register more than three events uh, in the year? Because personally, I work a lot with educa environmental education and birds are always the, the theme I talk about. So I'm wondering if I can register a couple events a year. Is it per person, per organization that it's directing um, environmental education with birds? That's a great question, Ariel. Actually, you can have as many events as you want for World Migratory Birthday. And this can be events, as we mentioned before, this can be as simple as giving a presentation on light pollution in a classroom or it can be a big festival like the ones like the one you have in Nicaragua where you dress up and where you invite all the community to participate so yes, at any time of the year we place those dates because those are the official dates but we're actually open to any day of the year okay great thank you excelente bueno por acá please laura leticia dani can you put the Okay, your email here. Okay, Miguel Mata. Mata, sir. Okay, ahí está mi correo si quiere contactarme para cualquier ayuda en los países de Sudamérica. So here's my email if you want to get in touch with me for uh, any contact with South America and also we leave the emails of the other coordinators and also in our website Maria Eugenia Mendiola you can find all of our social network sites like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook so I'm going to leave our main website in the chat again and you're going to be able to find a button 
where you'll go straight to our social networks. Entonces, eh, gracias por acá. Solo quiero... So, thank you. If there's anything else that you want to say, Danny? Well, I just wanted to, to ask. I just wanted to answer the question. Yes, there's a lot of people that do events and social networks. They do an online talk, they share information, and they also register that in our site. So yes, if you have events and social networks, that also counts. So you can register that and mention what you're doing. Sí. Okay. And that's bueno, últimas dos preguntas, Mario Eugenia. Okay, last two questions, Maria Eugenia. Yes, as long as you do educational, environmental education activities, even if they're online, it's fine. We, during the pandemic, most of the activities were online and they still counted as events. So yes, your activities online are welcome to be registered again. and Canada, we know that uh, every year is, is hard for you because uh, the materials come in April and just just one month uh, ahead for the World Migratory Bird Day in May. And we are working to uh, have all the materials ready in January. And we are we have a plan for that. And, and I, th I think we can start in this plan next year um, for, for for these educators that need more time to prepare their educational activities in the Northern Hemisphere. So great question. We are working on that. And thank you so much uh, for letting us know you are a uh, partner of our World Migratory Building. Okay. Entonces, eh, con esto damos cerrados el día de hoy. Felicidades so a todos. with that, we conclude today's sessions. Congratulations to everyone for your activities and we wish you the best to be able to share the conservation message this year. Thank you, goodbye. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for your time.